Hello everyone and welcome to Jump Romance Act where we specialize in HVAC to do everything DIY and today we have a service call for a Daikin inverter system. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumper Man Tech. Today we're working on a Daikin VRV system. These units are extremely difficult. We are in a very difficult location to even get here. I'm standing on top of a package unit. So let's go ahead and start taking off the covers, see if we have any error codes. They did mention something was blinking inside, but we couldn't get that code. So while we wait to get access to one of the rooms, Let's open this up and see if we have anything so we can figure out what's going on. So let's take off the panel and see what's up. Nothing is happening at the moment. All right, we took off the front panel on this side. Here's one of our main boards. See a huge contact there. Man, a lot of stuff going on with these units. But if we take this off, our light, we do have some sort of flashing. So let's see, H, H, P, we got a one, two, three. Two thousand years later. So he's got a constant blink on the H, A, P, which is the left light, and on the right, H, A, P. So we just have a constant green light, whatever that means. Let's see if we get any other clues. Next cover off. Man, this is a crazy machine. Okay, that's again the HAP is same thing on this one. Constant flash. We've got an orange light on HP2, an orange light on H3P, We've got a steady light on HAP, and then the HAP is also blinking on this one. And there's something blinking back there. Oh boy, all right. All right, so I went into one of the rooms and I found the error code. We had something blinking J4. So I printed out this self-diagnosis seat. So J4 says malfunction of low pressure equivalent saturated temperature sensor system. What does that mean? Searched it up on my phone. It says it can be a defective connection of thermistor a defective thermistor or a defective outdoor PCB. All right. And it also says if mold decay circuit breakers or earth leakage circuit breakers have tripped, do not reset the breaker immediately without first checking for any problems without insulation of equipment. Resetting breakers without a check of insulation may cause damage to the equipment. Now that I think about it, considering that we still have power here nothing tripped so we don't have to check the insulation so we should be good there i might test it just to be safe but it is saying that we have some sort of thermistor issue or a defective pcb which pcb i have no idea but i do have a feeling it might be something on this side as this one has some orange lights on and this doesn't. Typically green stands for like something good. So what are those sensors for? I'm pretty sure these are the thermistors here, this cable right here. And what I did notice was that this was actually a bit loose. So man, that would be amazing if that was the issue. We'll have those lights on might be good to reset it but what i really want to do is really find out what these codes stand for before anything but these were loose and i did push them in man that would be amazing if it was that simple but it's probably not definitely need to use your phone as a tool so it says right here the outdoor unit malfunction of temperature sensor for the heat exchanger gas R2T or R11T. So temperature is detected by these thermistors. And if a thermistor is disconnected or short circuits, we can get that error code J4. So it's saying that the connector is connected to X30A 
of the outdoor PC board, the A1P board. This is the A1P board. We got two of them. And it says that X3A, excuse me, X30A of the outdoor board is the thermistor that we're looking for. And it is what I thought. The thermistors are here. It's specifically this one right here. And I did find that loose. I did push that in. It does say in the manual to turn off the power before connecting or reconnecting anything. I read that after, fortunately. But I think we're gonna be okay. It was already connected, it was just loose. It was kind of out, so I just pushed it in. So what I would do is maybe turn it off, let all the capacitors discharge, leave it off for five to 10 minutes, and then reset everything and see what happens, see if we can reset. But right now, it's this thermistor or this thermistor that's giving us an issue. I have a feeling it's this one because this is the board that has the two orange lights and this doesn't. So I have a feeling it's something to do here and this is the one that was loose. Basically what this is saying is that we need to check that thermistor and see if we have any abnormal resistance. It says we should be reading 1.8 kilo ohms to 800 kilo ohms for those thermistors so if we do not have the resistance that we're looking for then we got to replace the thermistors if we do have the resistance that they're looking for then we got to replace the a1p board which is this so it's between the thermistors and the board the best bet probably would just be to change the thermistor with the board right can't go wrong if that's really the only issue so we could do that but I wanna do a little more troubleshooting here. It says those readings between the thermistors. So I guess if we have like OL on one of the lines, then it's bad. So what I wanna do is compare these thermistors with this one. So kill the power, let this discharge and see if we could check those thermistors. So this is the thermistor. So each two is a thermistor. So you have one, two, three, four, five thermistors here. So any one of those go bad, you're gonna have an issue. So I got these special little micro leads so we can check the pins. So let's start with this one all the way here. OL, is that legit? Let's make sure we're having a per good reading here. All right, I got 34 kilo ohms. What I wanna do is get a piece of paper and write down each reading for this one and match it up with that one. Let's start with that. All right, so we checked all these thermistors, at least on this side, and we pretty have a steady reading between four of the thermistors except for the first one. So all of them are pretty much reading about 34 kilo ohms, but for this first one, we're only getting 87. All right, guys, so I found the issue. It's gonna be this thermistor. So I took the readings off every two points, right? So every single one of the thermistors matches up with about 33 to 34 kilo ohms, except for one. And I'll show you that. So they all pretty much are going in about 34 kilo ohms. And I'll show you that reading. Let's just start this here. Right there, 33.8 kilo ohms. Every single one of them has that except this last one in the front, which like ranged for quite some different numbers. Right there, you see? Hold up. 403 ohms not kilo ohms everything is in kilo ohms except for this so 102 is the only one that's out of range compared to all of them the system hasn't been running so all the pipes are pretty much the same temperature whatever the outdoor temperature is it's about 45 degrees today that's what the temperature of these pipes are going to be so they all should read the same since it wasn't running so since one of them is off that's why we're getting that error code 
and that's what it said in the troubleshooting guide for the manual i did search up the model number and i got the manual and i was reading it and that's the information that we got so we could either have either a loose connection or a defective thermistor so they're saying in this case change the thermistor you should be okay but if the thermistors were good and they all read the same thing then the next thing you want to check is not even check is actually change this a1p board what i would say is to be safe change both you can't go wrong with both at, at this moment but let's say you change the thermistor you change that and next thing you know for some reason this board went bad and now it's gonna be weeks before this unit gets back into commission and right now it's heating season they need their heat so i think to be safe i would order the board and this but really the proper thing to do is to take it step by step so i would start with this but to be safe i would have that board honestly all right guys we're gonna finish up this video here i'm gonna wrap it up i'm gonna leave the power off the idea is to get this board this is the a1p board and the idea is also to change the thermistor can't go wrong in that sense but really what i would like to do is change the thermistor see what happens and if we do have another issue change the board but if you change both can't go wrong but really the issue here was that thermistor so until we can get the parts we're gonna leave it at that if anyone found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe as i come out with new videos every week and i'll catch you all next time Thank you.